how far should my grow light be from my plants? I know, it's a simple question to ask. As I've just demonstrated, it's complex to answer fully, so here's the short version. You have to base everything on your chosen species light requirements. For fast-growing, heavy-fruiting annuals, sure, you can get away with 500 to 700 micromoles, but 800 to 1,000 is your goal for maximum levels of production. I'm measuring light intensity with this Sun Systems Parmeter, also known as a quantimeter, arguably my most treasured grow room gadget. It measures plant usable photons and has a special setting for grow lights. That number on the screen, those are micro moles, a measure of light intensity for plants. I recommend choosing a unit with a remote sensor so you can test different positions across your canopy more easily. If you don't have a PAR meter, just be aware that your grow light should be positioned as close as possible to your plants without causing them radiant heat stress. Hold your forearm like this, level with your canopy directly underneath your grow light, and it shouldn't feel like it's warming up even after leaving it there for a minute or so. The only thing you should feel is your arm beginning to ache. Okay, you can put it down now. Now, plants cool themselves by transpiring moisture. In other words, plants sweat, right? Primarily through their leaves and lose their excess heat via the resulting evaporation. As such, a healthy plant's leaves tend to be 3 or 4 degrees lower than your grow room's air temperature in a well-dialed-in growing environment. Uh, for example, if your garden's air is, say, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, your plant's leaves should be around 76 to 77. Now here is another must-have gadget, an infrared thermometer. You can buy these online starting from around 30 bucks. Just point it at your chosen leaf, bam, and it gives you an instant reading of the leaf temperature. See? These leaves belonging to my Tokyo hot chili peppers right here underneath the 600 watt HPS are clearly too warm. I really didn't need this gadget to tell me this as they're also starting to curl up a little. A classic sign of localized low humidity stress caused by too much heat. This heat is made up of radiant heat from the lamp itself and waves in the infrared and visible parts of the spectrum too. Clearly, I either need to raise my lights up a little or see if I can tuck some of these branches a little lower underneath my netting. I love this netting. So handy for indoor growers. Of course, different types of grow lights produce different amounts of heat. T5 fluorescent tubes and compact fluorescents run at about 55 degrees Celsius or 130 degrees Fahrenheit. You probably want to give these puppies at least 6 to 12 inches more if your plants are very young. Metal halide and high pressure sodium HIDs run at 600 to 700 degrees Celsius. That's way over 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. Clearly, these guys need to be shown more respect. Respect. For horizontally mounted lamps, try 2 to 3 feet for 1,000 watts and 1 to 2 feet for 600s and 6 to 12 inches for 400s. Speaking of light wattages, if you're just starting out growing indoors, then please take my advice. A 1,000 watt high pressure sodium or metal halide is like jumping into a Ferrari as a learner driver. Consider a 400 or 600 watt first. Seriously, they are much more grower friendly and there's also a strong argument for using multiple light sources compared to just one. One. I'll save that topic for another time though. So let's talk about reflectors. Now this is a huge topic in itself, but bear this in mind. Different reflectors create different spreads or shapes of light. A medium spread is considered to be between 100 and 120 degrees. A wide spread is anything above 120. And a deep, beam me up Scotty style, is 90 degrees or below. The deeper or more beam like the spread, the further away you need to position your grow light, whereas wider spreads allow a closer position. Your goal as an indoor gardener is to create a uniform spread of light over your active growing footprint. 650 to 700 is adequate for healthy growth. During flowering and fruiting, if you can hit an average of 800 micromoles across your canopy, then you're doing really well, so long as your air temperature and leaf temperature are kept in check. Once again, I'm talking light-loving, heavy fruiting annuals here. Check out my video on training and pruning, where I describe how you can physically manipulate your plants to increase the efficacy of your grow lights. Low, wide canopies are the order of the day indoors for heavy fruiting annuals, not Christmas trees that come to a single point. Finally, I can't resist showing you my latest gadget, a sun winch. This lovely piece of kit gives me the ability to control the height of up to eight individual lights with the press of a button. So far, I've just got my 315 watt ceramic metal halide hooked up on this puppy, but I can definitely see how larger growers could benefit from this, especially those hard to reach lights in far corners. Okay, that'll do it. Hey, did I answer your question or just confuse the matter? Let me know in the questions and comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. This is Everest going, 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 gone.